Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us on iTunes right now, please leave a five-star review. Got a lot of stand-up shows coming up. I'm basically, um, and then I'm going to be putting together a whole little tour because my album is coming out March 15th, live from January 6th, baby. That's what we're going to call it. Uh, I'll let you know when you can pre-order the album doing it through Aaron Berg's uncancelable records. Very excited to be working with him. Uh, Comedians of the Compound will be back in Long Island at Governors in Levittown, February 26th. Then I will be in Savannah, Georgia at the Wormhole Comedy Club, March 19th. Then I'll be heading to Side Splitters in Tampa, Florida, March 20th. And then Comedians of the Compound will be back in Atlantic City, April 22nd and 23rd. Very exciting can't wait to do more stand-up and i can't wait to drop this album special thanks to our sponsor cushy dreams i don't know if you guys have been dealing with anxiety it's been a very anxious couple of years hasn't it and cushy dreams is here to help um do you feel like you can't avoid stress and anxiety are you in pain are you having trouble sleeping or maybe you'd like to have a calmer brain while you stay active That's where our friends at Cushy Dreams have solutions. Cushy Dreams specialize in high quality, smokable CBD. And CBD has been shown to help with anxiety, depression, inflammation, pain relief, and it just might work for you. They offer indica and sativa strains, and you get to pick the mood that you want to experience. Relax, create, hustle, peace, energy, dream. Plus, there's no hangover because there's no high. I personally like the hustle and the energy strains. I like to be a little bit more up. Go to CushyDreams.com, use promo code CMP to get 20% off your beautiful bud or pre-rolls. I really like the pre-rolls. They come in these nifty little five packs, very portable, very stick into your purse a bowl. Uh, their popular pre-roll joints are rolled in organic hemp paper and feature an even slow burn. Flour is available in nitrogen sealed cans and now humidity controlled one ounce mylar bags. Ooh, it's the future. It's top shelf cannabis that ships discreetly to you and directly to all 50 states. With Cushy Dreams, you experience the therapeutic benefits of CBD with full flower, full spectrum, and full flavor. We know you're sick of carts, vapes, gummies, and want to smoke your CBD. Now you can enjoy all the health benefits of cannabis without getting high. Gets into your system right away. Low THC, always organic, super fresh, super high quality stuff. Go to CushyDreams.com. That's K U S H Y dreams.com and use promo code cmp woohoo okay i'm so excited to have this gal on the pod today i feel like we have been our worlds have been circling each other for a while so it's always exciting um when we can get people like that on because we all share fans i feel like we all talk about and believe the same stuff uh she is the producer of toxic femininity she also, uh, I believe, produces The Dark Council. She also, uh, on her own channel, has show uh, two different shows called Welcome to Florida. And, Fri- uh, and on Friday, she has The Lunch Table Show. She's doing everything. Uh, welcome to the show, Lorena Creel. Hi, Chrissy. Hi. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm so excited. <laughs> me too. And look, happy Black History Month. Look, Woo! we're doing it. Yes, we are. <laughs> Yes, Does that like mean are. anything to you? Does it sound like uh, uh, almost patronizing? I don't know. Um, it's kind of interesting because with Black History Month, and this is something that I kind of have to explain to people, when Black History Month was first instituted, um, Black achievements weren't really taught in schools. And I want to say this is maybe I think like 1920s or something like that. So they created that particular holiday to give awareness. And as the years and the decades and, you know, the centuries have come on, more Black achievement has been integrated into regular American history, which is true, which is what it should be. So I'm really not offended when people, you know, talk about Black History Month, because for some people, that's the only time that it's that it gets into (laughs) consciousness, because I'm just like, I don't I don't know disrespect, but I don't really pay attention to. Asian history 
you know, all the way through, you know, all of all of the year no. or other ones. I mean, I do I pay attention to, you know, Hispanic History Month because, you know, because I actually have a Latino ancestry as well. But the other groups, you know, I just I just don't. And if there wasn't like a designated month, I it's like I wouldn't hone in on that. So I tell people, you know, don't, I wish the schools would teach better, <laughs> but if that's the one thing that triggers you into saying, you know, oh, I want to, you know, learn more about, you know, Jack achievement in this, Black achievement in this country, then there's nothing wrong with that. Do you, what do you feel like is a, like a big glaring, um, something that the schools are not teaching that they should, like, what do you think is the most obvious change they could make? To get away from this notion that all black people were brought to this country as slaves. Now we'll say before I started researching my family, I thought that that was true. My family thought that that was true. Mm -hmm. And that was the oral history that was passed down. But the more research I did on my own, I started finding out about free Africans who came to this country. You know, they were, they were free. Some, you know, came through like the Spanish empire, which is part of my family through, you know, Spanish Florida came that way. Spanish and French Louisiana came that way into the mm. islands. Some of them were enslaved. Some of them were not. The Jean de Colère in um, French Louisiana, very powerful class of free black and mulatto people. Some, who, unfortunately, and I'm related to some of them, actually owned slaves. They did. Spanish Florida, same thing. There was a certain, um, I guess, a certain mechanism called cortacion, which was codified in Spanish law, which said that if a slave paid that price, that cortacion price, you had to free them. Wow. That's so interesting. That, yes. So there was a mechanism to do that. So that's kind of like how my family lived from like Florida to Louisiana from like, I want to say from 1565s up wow. until the Americans started to take over. Uh, most notably in Florida, when the Americans took over in 1821 from Spain, you had the institution of the Black Code. So if you were free, you either had to pay a tax, have a white sponsor, or if not, Put yourself back into slavery. Uh. So they really don't discuss that whole class. And it's very, very interesting, uh, very interesting history. They Why wouldn't that. they? That seems, I feel like, wouldn't it be to everyone's benefit to like, because it, it I, f I feel like you're bringing this up, like, a, you know, like, it sounds like you wish this was taught more in schools, because maybe it wouldn't give as many people this feeling of like, I, I don't know, do you think it makes people feel worse about themselves thinking that, that they all just came from slaves that it's, it's a little bit more like implants you with like a victim mentality or. Um, I think it is a victim mentality and it's different from like, say the 60s, 70s, 80s. People just wanted to know their history, especially with the TV show roots that really exploded things where people just wanted to know their history. And I don't think that the embarrassment comes from slavery. I think the embarrassment comes from not knowing mm. what your roots are. And not only that, but there are stories of people who were not victims, who pursued cases um, in court. Um, those people who protected, you know, their, their families. There are so many stories out there of people who were not victims. They don't talk about, you know, the slave revolts that were rampant in the United States. They kind of painted as that slaves were all happy with, you know, with what they were doing and there was there was no revolt. There were plenty. There were plenty. How could of there not them. be? Yeah. <laughs> there were, yeah, there were plenty of them. But I think that there's this idea that they want to teach this victim mentality before it was like, okay, this was the past. You pull yourself up and you do better with each and every generation. I've seen like on paper, some of my ancestors who were slaves freed in like 1865, couldn't read, couldn't write 1870. By 1880, not only could they read and write, but they owned their own property. Wow. That's what we call a glow up. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So how that's, that's incredible. Like how were, and you figured this all out because to just to do like, um, you did like a 23 and me type test or does, did it go like deeper than that? 
Um, a little bit deeper than that. My grandfather, who uh, served in World War II, one of the things that he wanted was he wanted the family history written down. No one had done that. Ours was like an oral tradition. I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll someone's going to gonna forget. Like, yeah, someone's some, gonna, yeah. <laughs> someone's going to forget. And that's the problem with, you know, with oral, you know, with oral tradition, stories get passed around that may not exactly be accurate and, you know, and all of that. And then probably about five years ago, I said, okay, the price of genetic testing has dropped, you know, for DNA testing, because for some of us, especially if your background, you have a lot of enslaved people in your background. Once you get to, I think, like 1870, there's that wall. You can't get past huh. that. There's no, there's no information because either whether you're a slave or free, it's the thing of just getting records. And that can be very, very challenging. There's a way to get them, but it's not, you know, through the, uh, through the normal means. So I did take, um, I took an ancestry DNA test. I took that, um, got that back. Is that pee? What do you do? You put it in your mouth? What do you give them? No, no, you don't pee. (laughs) You actually spit, honestly. Okay. Uh, (laughs) You just like spit in a Give them just a sample of all your fluids. Be like, figure it out. Learn what you must. Spit it out and then spit it in there. But you just spit in a tube, you know, and you send it. So I get it back. Yeah, you know, African countries. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay. England. Yeah, I kind of figured that. Then I saw France. Then I saw Spain. Then I saw Germany. I'm like, okay, I have, I have no idea what's, you know, what's, what's going on with this because my great grandmother, they always said, well, her father was Seminole Indian. I'm like, okay, so let's figure out if this is true. And no Native American matches. The only Native American that we had, believe it or not, was from Central America. So we're talking like Mexico, Yucatan. Oh, cool. We're like, okay, we don't know how that how that adds up. And then we had all of these matches who were from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. We'd never been there. And I'm just like, are you, are you, something's going on. I test my aunt, same test, boom, Uh comes back more Native Americans still from Central America and yet more people in Cape Cod and all these people from like the Dominican Republic, Colombia, places like that. I said, well, what's up with uh, great grandma's uh, father? Was he really seminal? And she said, well, there was this rumor that her father was white, but it was not culturally acceptable. And this is a Jim Crow South to actually say that it was much more acceptable socially for her to say that her father, you know, was a Seminole Indian. Not oh. only was he a white man, but he was a white man from Massachusetts. <laughs> Hence the Cape Cod. Yep. That's so interesting. This whole time I've been scared to spit in a tube and send it somewhere because I'm like, what are they going to do with my information? They're going (laughs) to like, I don't know. I think I listened to too many conspiracy theories, but I'm just like, oh, what are they going to do with it? They're going to make clones somewhere. They're going to, but I am getting curious. Like, who knows? Yeah. Like people could make stuff up. People could, I don't know, lie. But that's so interesting that, they'd rather say Indian than white. Yeah, it was just, it's, I didn't understand it either. And then the more that I researched more like socially, what was going on at the time, my great grandmother, and I call her like OG Lorena Creole. So she was Afro Latina. She was very, very fair. People thought that she was white, but in the South, there was like that one drop rule. If it even looks like you may be black, guess what? Then, you know, then you're black. So it was much easier for them to move in social circles to basically say, you know, my father's Seminole Indian. Oh, okay. As opposed to say, my father is actually a white man from Massachusetts. Them and all their money came down after the Civil War. They basically bought up the whole freaking town because the South was destitute. At the end yeah. of the Civil War, Confederate money was worthless. So my third great grandparents, they packed up everybody from Orleans, Massachusetts, came to Alachua County, Florida, bought all their money we're talking kennedy money and wow. bought the whole town bought people's farms mortgages all of all of that so it was it wasn't you know the classes did not mix at you know at at you know at all so it was much easier for her to do that and somebody said mayflower yes actually yeah. yes i'm related to 10 mayflower passengers 
What? That is so cool. Do you know what ship they were on? Uh, Mayflower. That oh, one. Oh, right. That was the one. That's okay. <laughs> That's... Oh, I think Mayflower. I feel like Mayflower is the fleet. I know there's the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. Maybe those are salad dressings. I don't know. <laughs> That's Columbus's crew. Two of them got lost. Oh, God. Right. Right. Oh, my God. Well, that just shows how much history I know. Uh, some of this I did not expect to have to, you know, learn, but it's like the more that you learn and it wasn't just like American history. There's like a period of time that goes into British history. Then it's like either in Spanish or French history. And then I have to read stuff in like one language I know pretty good, which is French. And then the other one, which is Spanish, which I don't really know too bad. And then you have to read in cursive at the same time. So it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting, but if anything, it's given me more insight into how this country was built and some of the fallacies that have been told over the years simply from lack of some from ignorance and some from lack of evidence what yeah one of them i think the main one i guess sounds like you're saying is that yeah there were like lots of just like free they were everyone not everyone was a slave which i feel like would help for people to know no, and the other thing is that people seem to act as if there were not, there wasn't such a thing as black slave owners. Yes, there were, because I'm related to several, and I've literally had to sit there and look at the documents that show so and so who is actually the owner, who is the slave owner, and the list of all the slaves that they owned. And it's a it's a weird um, position to get put in, but it is true. They did do that because slavery was an economic institution. Racism was the enforcement arm of that institution. It's like, oh, we just called them interns. We don't like to think of them <laughs> slaves. They're just uh, minions <laughs> doing uh, chores. <laughs> ah, who doesn't like to do the laundry? Oh my god, that's so interesting. And now I really want to get. DNA test done and yeah, do know. it and tell them to destroy the uh sample. D really? Oh, that's an option. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I looked into that. Yeah. But how do you know if they're really destroying it? Well, they're supposed to, but if there's a clone of myself, somebody's getting sued. <laughs> like if I like if I see another good-looking woman, if I bump into another Lorena, I'm like, why are you mirroring my? Okay. All right. Where were you hatched at? I need to know. So you're like a light, a Florida lifer. You're so much of your family is from Florida, born and raised. You have the show. Welcome to Florida. What is that about? Is that I'm a I'm guessing a lot of like Florida man stories, but maybe there's it, uh, it is <laughs> just to kind of just to kind of backtrack. My uh, my mother was the one who actually left Florida with with my dad to move north. Everyone else like stayed down here because they're like we're not going up there. <laughs> <laughs> going up there so i eventually of course i moved back down here so the family's like kind of happy the welcome to florida show i kind of put together to let people know about florida other than the theme parks like uh the history of course there's just like the crazy florida man stories because <laughs> there are things in those florida man stories that i have actually seen in like real life really Do they involve alligators or crocodiles or both uh mostly uh Gators, lizards, fish, birds, ex-husbands, cousins, um, firearms that may or may not have been fired after several years and they found one and decided, you know, that they that they wanted to uh that they wanted to use it. Just <laughs> things that things that people aren't, you know, aware of. Like I would go and stay with my grandparents in Florida for the summer. Like I would stay with my paternal set of grandparents in like urban Jacksonville, which is pretty much Afghanistan right now. If you go and take a look at it, how, you know, how that city looks, it's gone to hell in a handbasket. Thank you, Democrats. <laughs> um, then there's Alachua County, not Alachua County, excuse me, Putnam County, which was very rural where my other set of grandparents lived, where I was in a place with wildlife and insects and bugs that i never freaking seen before in my life and i did not oh, wait you said insects animals. not incest no mm -mm, I know. okay <laughs> <laughs> that's fun okay so wow was i guess was florida ever a red state or has it hmm. i mean florida is interesting in that of course um kind of like up north the major cities are blue 
like um, Jacksonville's blue. Tampa kind of used to be purple. Now that's blue. Of course, Alachua County, which I call the People's Republic of Alachua County because the University mm. of Florida is there. So it's kind of like that ivory tower. Oh, yeah. Communism. You know, yeah. E- exactly. Brainwashed exactly. college students. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like capitalism is bad, but don't take oh, my God. iPhone. We don't all had that. that phase. Yeah. It's just you, you uh, don't realize how dumb you sound until you grow up and you're like, oh, yeah. Boy. You start paying taxes. Like, who's this FICA heifer? Why am I giving? Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to meet FICA? But like Miami is, um, the major cities are, and then you have like the rural areas that are pretty much, um, that are pretty much red. So Florida's yeah, been, yeah, so Florida's been, um, it was kind of teetering towards blue, but then of course we had the whole thing and, you know, DeSantis got elected, thank God, or we would have had that other guy who was busted in a hotel in a very unflattering position. Who? Um, his, uh, his opponent was a man called Andrew Gillum. Oh, wow. You can look him him up. He was, uh, actually busted at a hotel, passed out in his own vomit. That's in the press. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. They they, they they had a good time. (laughs) I know. But yeah, that's kind of like how, um, how it is now, you know, in Florida. So thank goodness we have DeSantis because good Lord. Yeah. He's pretty dope. Uh, yeah. I definitely have a uh, governor envy. So how did you get into being a sci-fi fan, being a sort of like pop culture commentator, being somebody who's in this sort of like nerdosphere? Um, I would say the sci-fi stuff started when I was um, in school. And I want to say like, junior to high school. I got hooked on a show called Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, I'd known about old school Star Trek. I kind of like watched it in refunds. I would sit there with my grandfather and I'd watch it. So I'm like, oh, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is pretty cool. Cause the original series, it's like they had, you know, Uhura and I had never seen a black woman on a sci-fi show ever. So I was kind of like hooked. Um, Uhura, U H U R A. So that's uh, Nichelle Nichols, who I got to meet in real life one time, and I turned into a total freaking fangirl when uh when he did. Wow, she was a babe. She's hot. She's, She's a hottie. Hot. She was. I didn't ever watch Star Trek, but now I might have to. Original series. What a babe. Original series. It is. It is dope. It is absolutely dope. Her her life story is oh my amazing. god, she does look so much like what is her face? She was in Black Swan. Um, mm-hmm. I can't remember. That's uh, that's Zoe. That's Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana. Yeah, yeah that's Zoe Saldana. She really does mm-hmm. look like her. Wow. Yeah. So I'd watch like Next Gen. That's kind of how it started, and then of course it's like eventually you know I saw Star Wars, and I went into um, engineering. Cause that's what I, that's what I wanted to, to do. So when you're in technology, heavy fields like that, it's almost a given that you're in nerd culture. If you're in an industry like that, like engineering or science, and you're not a nerd, there, there's something wrong. People just look at you like, you know, why, why are you here? When they start making certain jokes or certain references and you don't get it, it's just like, why, is it because it's a lot of men or just like, it's that part of the brain. Like if you have a proclivity for like STEM subjects, like you're going to be more into sci-fi. That's just the way it works out. I think it's both. I think it's both. In general, those type of sciences tend to attract more men because they're more logically oriented as opposed to, say, the social sciences, which is more into emotions and feelings and why there are women in there. So I think it's a little bit of both. So if you happen to be a woman, a very left brained like, you know, like I am, you you do get, you know, you do get into it like. Mr. Scott from the Enterprise, he is like the epitome of engineering. You never tell them how long it's going to take you to do something. <laughs> you <laughs> never do. And he said that, you know, like in an episode of Next Gen. So you see these, you know, you see these examples like Star Wars, you know, um, with lightsabers. It was like a thing. Yeah, one of these days I'm going to invent, you know, I'm going to invent the lightsaber. So you just get like plugged into that. That's kind of like how... It had been for um, for years, kind of getting into that and into pop culture and going to the movies and reading the books and seeing things on uh, on television. But with respect to YouTube, I got peer pressured into that. 
<laughs> who, who did that? Who, who peer pressured you? Um. Oh, there were a whole lot of people. <laughs> there were a whole lot of people. But let's see. Off the bat, let's see. We had like Tom from Midnight's Edge. He was one of them. Gary Nerdrotic. He was one of them. John Talks. He was one of them as well. Um. The guys, all the guys on the uh on the Dark Council. And, and who's as that? Well. Drunk 3PO. That's, uh, Drunk 3PO, Dimaj and I, uh, Abu Nas, uh, the Gospel According to Mark with the C, Lord Callus, and Fatal J. So it's like six of six of uh six of them. And they're kind of like, when are you gonna start a channel? I'm like, I don't know. Why do I have to start a channel? I'm crashing everybody's live streams, having a good time, hot behind an avatar. Don't even have to fix my face up, do anything. <laughs> How did I they just... find you initially to start guesting? Um, initially, I was in the dark council chat. Mm. Like they would have their show. Well, at the um... time it was called Some Black Guys and a Drunk. I, I guess that's what they decided they were gonna start out, you know, start out with that. And I was just watching their show and I would just talk to people, you know, in the chat. We just start talking, get to meet each other. And then, you know, as you know, you start to just make these connections with other people and other shows. And you just kind of start drifting around from show to show. Hey, come on my panel. Okay, cool. Hey, come on my panel. Cool. So I just had fun just drifting from channel to channel, just being on a panel, doing whatever, not having to, you know, run my own channel. And then people yeah, no like, responsibilities. Yeah. You can just be you. you can exactly. Be I can just you hang have all out. This knowledge. Yeah. Don't have to do a schedule. I just show up. Where Where do you want me at? You know, I just you know, I just show up. And I had like a hundred people um, subscribe to me on YouTube, and no videos. I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? <laughs> so you had a chance. No videos. And, and no, no, you know, no, no videos. It was just a hundred people. They were there people. waiting for you. Yeah. They're just hanging around. I'm like, okay, but I really don't know if I'm ever going to do one. And then I finally decide to do a channel, finally decide to reveal my face, which I'd done on a show mm. on um, Abu Nasa's channel and said, oh, well, I don't know if this is really going to go anywhere. So, you know, what the heck? I'll start a channel. Started the channel. I think I want to say end of May. By Thanksgiving, I was monetized. Oh, end of May of what, of what year? End of May of last year. Wow. May of, no, sorry, May of 2020. Okay. That's when I started my channel. And then I was monetized by Thanksgiving 2020. And I'm That's like, amazing. wow. I'm like, uh, are these real people? <laughs> <laughs> Are these real people? Because you see these people who, you know, like yourself and others, you know, and Gary and like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers and of course like the Dark Council, they're out there doing stuff. So it's just like, you know, I'm just one more person. What, you know, who's going to pay attention to what I have to say? And then people were just showing up. Yeah, like, that's what I think that a lot of people feel that way. That's definitely what how I felt. I was like, well, who needs another comedian with a podcast? Like for a couple of years, I was just like, no, like telling myself no and just uh and maybe a little bit of like imposter syndrome like why would people come to me when there's so many more like qualified sources out there um so you, it's good that you just have to get over that little hump and now you're check you out you've got all these videos um do you also do theme park reviews like i've seen uh drunk 3po do yep i do i do so i go to the theme park since since i moved to florida um i go to theme parks about a couple couple of times a week I'm relatively close and I just I just love I love theme parks because to me theme parks are the physical manifestation of pop culture like I can mm -hmm. go to Universal like I love the Simpsons the fact that I can go to Universal and walk into a quickie mart I'll never that's get true. That. that's pretty cute <laughs> see I like to shit on people who go to theme parks like adults because I'm just like I, I notice all the people who are obsessed, like they go for their engagement, they go to get married, they do a honeymoon there, they do like every year there. And I'm like, these people are mentally ill. I think they're avoiding <laughs> something. I think they're trying to shirk responsibilities. They're they're just avoiding adulthood. They're, you know, they're they have they're just playing out this fantasy life. And I don't know, maybe I'm too hard on them, but um well, I say yes and no because I've seen people who are really extra about theme parks and that's when I realized um I'm pretty sane for the most part it's like I kind of I'm the person who will go to a theme park and if I see something let's see 
shiny. Uh -huh. Yeah, same. <laughs> or sparkly or whatever. Look at all your stuff. Oh my gosh, is this a Pluto? An old school Pluto behind you? An old school Pluto with a plush Megatron. Oh my god, check, check this out. This is like something, this used to be, I think, my mom or my dad's. <gasps> this is an old, this is a, I think, glass or porcelain. Um, oh my gosh, it does. It looks like it's, mine. I don't know how old it is, but it's got like, obviously there's air holes in the feet. Like, I don't know how this was made and I don't know what year. It's obviously like Walt Disney made in Japan. I have no idea. It's definitely super old. And oh, yeah, that's valuable. Take care of that. It's my <laughs> watch. I drop it and break it. Um, there you go. And then I yeah. like remember all the McDonald's toys that like turned into mm -hmm. people. I don't know where they are. I had I had a couple more, but oh, that's cool. Yeah. Now they have like shitty McDonald's toys. <laughs> I'm like, break. I don't care about Encanto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so neat. And then when did you start? I guess who was the first person like you, I guess, met in? Well, you're in Florida, so you're around mm -hmm. a lot of these, uh, like, I guess the geeks and gamers are, are kind of out there. Um, did you start like who did you start meeting in person or would you go to meetups? I didn't have a chance to go to meetups. So I want to say probably the first YouTube personality that I met in person actually was Drone Free Pro. Oh, oh. Yeah, so I met him initially last year in the summer before I actually moved, um, you know, here to uh, move to Florida. And I think after that, um, met a couple of a uh, couple of other people, not in geeks and gamers, but kind of like in the same sphere, like in our chats. I kind of like ran into ran of them. I met uh, Dimash and I in person from for the Dark Council. I didn't get to go to the New York meetup because literally I had just moved to Florida, uh, so I couldn't go to the New York meetup. So I'm kind of waiting for Geeks and Gamers to announce the Orlando meetup, yeah, so I could so I could beat those guys because I couldn't like make the one I believe that's out west that was in Vegas that um neurotic and geeks and gamers put together and <laughs> i had the worst case of fomo with that <laughs> oh we'll go to the next one okay so frank looked up this figure guess how much it's worth 200 <laughs> i wish 18 bucks <laughs> here it is on ebay vintage 1960s pluto porcelain ceramic figurine walt well disney production used just like mine Wow. Look at yeah, that. that was way off. <laughs> wow. But it's so Ooh, cute. It was originally four fifty. See, yeah, I like well, I like an old price tag. Yeah, so there you go with uh with inflation. Yeah. I'm gonna hang on to it. Oh I would God, look at all this shit. Because that's another thing about theme parks. People will buy stuff and, and fence it. Because somebody said something about the $1,000 popcorn bucket. Yeah, I did get that Figma popcorn bucket, but I only paid 25 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I I also paid like 50 bucks for a Gina Carano action figure. I'm oh, gonna that's have, okay. I'm going to have her <laughs> sign it one day. I'm just like, oh, I'm such a fan girl. That's so yeah. neat. Cool. Um. Okay, so... The Florida is in a crazy bout of cold right now. How are you handling it? What are what temps are you dealing? Are you, are you having to deal with like, oh my God forbid of putting a sweater on? Like, what are we talking here? Are there jackets coming out? Um, as my blood has not thinned out yet, <laughs> I'm the crazy person out there. It's 40 degrees. I'm out in my porch with like a cup of coffee and a light sweater. Like, why are you guys all in puffer jackets and knit hats and and like ski masks, like you're going to rob a bank. I'm like, it's only 45, you know, degrees outside. It's not that bad. But here it's, you know, Floridians are like, oh my God, it's freezing. You know, iguanas are falling out of trees and the hybrid. Frankie McDonald <laughs> told me that there's iguanas <laughs> falling out of trees. And I thought he was just joshing me. He's a famous uh, YouTube meteorologist. He said that the iguanas are falling out of trees. Oh yeah, if they're they, so cold. They just don't know what to they do. They just themselves. hibernate and pff, and they're on the ground. And they tell people, "Don't, don't, don't touch them, unless they're in the street." Because there's a video oh. where somebody found one that was in the street and they brought it, you know, to the side. So just, just let it stay there. When it gets warm, they'll get back up 
and start moving. But yeah, that literally I did a whole part of my welcome to Florida show this past uh, Sunday where we showed videos of like iguanas falling from falling from trees, you know, hibernating, paralyzed, you know, on the uh, is, okay. Is this the one the brave of Florida it's freezing video? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, this I have to see because it's a it's a it's a it's a stream. I want to say I think it was like I think about 50, 20 minutes in, thirty minutes okay. in. I think you're probably gonna have to scrub until you see like a little black and white video where we just like rolled it over and over and over again with like the iguana falling out, falling oh out of the God, tree. I can't believe that. <laughs> yeah, how could you not want to like pick? Oh, here we go. Oh my God. Okay, then. Florida man has Florida man problems. It's so fun. Like my dad lives in Florida. All right, let's see here if I could bring this up. I feel like Florida just provides an endless amount of material. It it does, especially considering they have a what's that one retirement community? Oh yeah, the Villages, which has the highest number of STDs. Ah, <laughs> no way. Oh yeah, uh, that's great. All right, let's see. It's just so cold. The guy was a child. <laughs> oh, are we gonna see one <laughs> falling out? Since I was off street for seven minutes, and yeah, it, sh it, sh it should. Brought as an undercover gay drug. <laughs> yeah, we did have an undercover gay drug bus uh, oh, story. <laughs> wow, not you just drugs, but gay away. drugs. It's kind of like when you watch CSI, you cannot miss. I'm gonna wait till the. Uh... Let's see. Yeah, you just wait till you see the iguana fall out of the tree. What are gay drugs, poppers? Um, no, what had happened was uh Polk County, which has a gangster sheriff, Sheriff Grady uh Judd, he will do everything from rapping a press conference. <gasps> oh yeah, God! Oh, God. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> That's why you gotta watch out. <laughs> Like they're 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 nuts. It's 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 crazy. They just fall like that. It's just nuts. But anyway, but yeah. So the sheriff, he had this undercover sting operation called Swipe Left for Meth. And what they did was <laughs> they found out that drug dealers were selling drugs on gay dating apps like Grinder and two others that I can't remember. Kind of brilliant. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, we can't believe they just freaking put it out there. <laughs> so They're living the their truth. Of, yeah. <laughs> the kind of stuff we find <laughs> put on this on this show. It's just like Florida never disappoints. I usually have more material than I can put in a 90 a 90 minute show we'd be there for like five freaking hours that's really great that's <laughs> awesome i want to know what are your feelings on like hollywood remakes or like a lot of these shows being kind of like we, we're seeing kind of more like woke remakes like they're recasting certain characters like they're diversifying old characters what are your feelings on that do you feel like sometimes it's good do you feel like sometimes it's bad um for the most part i feel like it's bad because for me if you're going to do a remake that tells me that you don't really have the imagination to either come up with something original or come up with a twist that's so unexpected that it subverts your expectations like cobra kai i love that show it's ah. so good I didn't watch that show for a couple of uh, a couple of weeks after it came out because people were like, oh, it's so great. It's so great. I'm like, it's the Karate Kid. I freaking that's seen what, that. That's why I never watched Game of Thrones because I just was like, everyone's talking about how great it was. And I was like, man, I want to watch it. Nah, nah. I was just like, nah, you know, I've seen the Karate Kid. I've seen the Karate Kid part two. Didn't want to see part three. What's so interesting about Cobra Kai? And then I think I got YouTube premium for, I think, like a free trial or something like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit there and see what this show, what's so great about this. If it's just a crap remake or people just making stuff up and I watched it and holy crap, yeah. I got hooked. I didn't, I never thought that I would see Daniel as the bad guy and yeah. Johnny as the good guy. And that just like totally subverted my expectations. 
And Hayden Schlossberg, who uh, is the producer, I believe, of, of that show, had basically gone point by point and said how they did that because they respected the source material. They yep. came at it from a different angle. But they kept like the old fans and also provided a bridge to the, you know, to the new fans. But that takes a lot of effort and tenacity to do. And Hollywood just seems to be just like kicking out remakes, you know, popping them like Tic Tacs. I think they're just, I don't know, they're afraid to maybe let new creators in or they're just, there's too much, too much money to be made off of, off of reboots, I guess. And it's low effort. I don't know. It seems kind of lazy. And uh, I mean, yeah, we talk about this all the time. Like it's, it's not, it takes advantage of fans nostalgia. It's like you have this ready made audience, but nobody's happy to see for the most part what's made. Um, I mm-hmm. am enjoying book of Boba Fett, which I think I'm like not supposed to enjoy. I don't know because I love the Mandalorian so much. I just love, I, and I know I'm not supposed to enjoy that either. I was supposed to, I was supposed no! to stop after Gina was fired. I was supposed to unsubscribe, but I didn't. And, uh, well, it's my boyfriend's account and, and he, <laughs> like he needs it for his kid. He, they have to watch it. <laughs> and then I'm like, <laughs> so I've been, I've been liking Boba Fett. I'm, I mm-hmm. don't really I'm not as critical of it as uh, some of the Friday Night Tights guys like to be, but I also don't like come from that super nerdy background. Like I don't know all the all of the background, I guess. But mm-hmm. I kind of enjoyed the latest episode, which was essentially a Mandalorian episode, and I was like, why can't they just do more of that? And I and I watched your video um, review of it, and I was like, yeah, I agree that Boba Fett should be more like like the Mandalorian. Um, what's his name? Din Jang or uh, Din Jaren? Din Jaren. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how do y'all? Come I guess up I have a real name. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like Ben Jamin. Like what? <laughs> He's such a badass, and I hate that he was like so shamed. Like he was helmet shamed for taking his helmet off. I know, like, right? He didn't even he, like what a couple of times for Baby Yoda. Big deal like that Bo-Katan chick took hers off you didn't say anything or or maybe had selective memory I don't (laughs) and yeah they're so like it's down to just two of them that's how exclusive this like super uh I don't know Mm -hmm. righteous Mandalorian club is just now it's just now it's just two of you so it's gonna Mm -hmm. be a small party I can't believe they booted him out like that (laughs) Uh, but it's okay it's like you it's like i tell people you you like what what you you know what you like there were some people who felt that when gina carano got fired that they should you know cancel disney plus i said that's a personal decision i was watching the mandalorian for uh giancarlo esposito he played moff gideon so he was you know he was my favorite character i really really liked him him in um breaking bad yes he's such a good villain He's the he was the chicken guy. He was so good. Yes, he was he he was he was awesome. I love that the way he went out, man. I think they blew the special effects budget for the rest of the year <laughs> with how that with that had happened. But I but I mostly watched that you know to see him. And there were other things on Disney Plus that I wanted to see, so I didn't I didn't I didn't cancel my service. But that was kind of like a personal choice. Some people do not like the book of Boba Fett. I'm one of those that doesn't because there's so much that they've strayed from from the original character Mm -hmm. that it's very hard for me to enjoy now for some people who it's kind of like a cursory thing oh i just want to watch and enjoy it it's perfectly fine when you do if you don't know you don't know you don't yeah if you you don't know it yeah Yeah. you can't really be at fault for that because it's kind of like i watch plenty of of stuff that's not really good for you like 90 day fiance (laughs) And, and love after lockup, and, and, you know, stuff like that, that I just purely watch this because, you know, it's a, it's a guilty pleasure and I like, and I like to watch it, but I just think it's a shame that it's like the one episode from the book of Boba Fett that I like is the one that Boba Fett isn't in. Yes. Pollos My, hermanos. Pollos hermanos. Gus. The meth in the chicken. <laughs> Yes, that chicken guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that was such a good show. I love wow. that show. I binged it so hard. Oh, thank you, Jen, for the super sticker. Thank you, Steel mm. Wrath. Christy, you're the hardest working lady in podcasting. Never stop. I showed my wife your frosk bitch. She laughed her butt off. Never stop. You're crushing it. Oh, thank you, German Shepherd. 
I saw that quote unquote interview with Frost that oh, was on FX. I was in I was in tears. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It was very last minute. I like just got out of the car. We like drove up to the to the Poconos for the weekend. I was like, I have to do this bit. I have to. I had my wig in the bag. I had like I didn't have all the eyeshadow that I wanted to do for her. And the nose ring was like bent out of shape and it was like falling <laughs> out. And I was like, this is this is a very budget frost impression. And uh, I was like, it's not going to be as funny as the first one. And I'm really happy that people found it funny. So I don't know. And there's so many, I was talking about this early, in a stream earlier today. There's a good amount of people that thought that that was actually her. They're like, wow. Oh, she's so funny and likable. <laughs> and they're like, and then there's people like, Oh, nobody's calling her out. How, you know, they're, they're really <laughs> softballing her. I was like, this is great. I just, I just thought it was the most hilarious thing because that, that whole thing with her and G4 provided me with so much material between <laughs> toxic femininity and the dark council and oh my, my own God. channel that it was perfect. It's, because on it's toxic like fem the definition of toxic femininity, right? Totally. We took that whole three minute thing and broke it down on, on toxic femininity. It I bet was it was like, it could be its own episode. Like you really, and you notice as a woman, right? You notice the moment where she her voice cracks and you're like oh she's two seconds from breaking down into tears like like you see her you're she's got kind of falling apart in the middle which i felt bad for and i'm like she's taking something that's kind of personal and making it an everybody problem yeah and that's not you know it's not the case it's like you're always going to have you know a certain percentage of people who are just a-holes that's kind of how it is with both men and women you know it kind of just you just need to suck that up and you know go go on with it but you know when you're wrong you're wrong but even if you are wrong you don't need to tar all of your fans with the same brush and that <laughs> no that right, they're not fun. all doing that like some of them aren't it doesn't occur to them whether they would or wouldn't jerk off to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, don't get upset. There's somebody for everybody for that type of fantasy, you know? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, who cares? She's like, she's like very involved with a girlfriend, I think. So like, what does it matter? Yeah, I, mm, she's not well. trying to like get it in, in her YouTube comments, <laughs> which is what they're for. No. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. And it, I could see she made a ton of subscribers from it, a ton of followers. I don't know how G4 is doing, but then she deleted all those tweets. So I'm just yeah, like, okay, um, she like G4 isn't doing so so good. Cause I used to watch G4 like back in the day when it was actually, you know, fun. And I've had uh Chris Gore who used to be on G4 back in the <gasps> day. I've had him Gore. on my channel. We usually have a theme park stream like once a month, and he'll be, you know, and he'll be on. But G4 now is nothing the way I re remember remember it being. G4 used to be just fun between, you know, game reviews and stuff like that. Just some just fun freaking material. And now it's just, yeah. No, see, we, we got YouTube now, so we don't need, you know, G4. That's true. They're not the, the end all be all for commentary about gaming. Um Especially like, I don't know. And I was reading in my comments too. Somebody's like, look at you. You're talking about her looks. And it's like, first of all, we wouldn't even be talking about this if she didn't have her meltdown. So it's not like we would have, I would have, she, I would have never heard of her if it weren't for the meltdown. She freaking lost her mind. I'm like, she's sitting there melting down, blaming everybody. She comes out the gate yelling sexism and gaming. We're just, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> And then I had a uh, I had an all I have an all girls podcast called the Simcast, and uh, um, that Star Wars girl Anna, she was going we were going through her Instagram, and she found like her whole um, Frost's whole back is tattooed like down to her ass crack, like whole thing. It's like a it's like a really? ship in the in the ocean, and there's wind and gas yeah. around it, and like even her, it's just she had a naked photo of like her basically her whole ass, her whole naked back, because it's like showing off the tattoo, but it's like. We can see your ass crack, girl. Like, don't don't tell everybody. Like, oh, I, I demand not to be sexualized when you're showing when you have a visible ass crack from 2016. I don't know. Mm. It's a little hypocritical, but very. I wish her the best. I uh, I hope she maybe 
has some self-awareness from this whole thing. I hope so. I think she just kind of needs to take some time, recenter herself and, you know, come back. And the lesson learned, just because a few a-holes come at you the wrong way, you don't go after the whole fandom as a whole. Just, just. Don't. Yeah. You can't stereotype all of your fans. Exactly. For exactly. What was, might've been, I don't know, maybe like a couple hundred at, at most. <laughs> probably less than that yeah not too much some people were like g4 is back <laughs> that was literally <laughs> people were like g4 is back for real oh <laughs> oh so they took a break and then came back they had been off the air for like a while i think i want to say probably like 10 years and then oh, this wow. was supposed to be the big relaunch of, oh so uh, it's newly back oh mm -hmm. when did it come back do you remember um like just last year i wasn't aware that it came back until frost had that meltdown <laughs> that was part how of i knew it was back <laughs> so it pretty much exploded on launch pretty much oh wow wow okay so that this isn't even like a, a veteran of the show like she's getting comfortable you've been there a few years uh, you know mm -mm. then you have your monologue but damn that's bold wow but you know what? It's uh, it's good entertainment for us, and it's 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 good content for all of our channels. <laughs> oh heck yeah! <laughs> Ew. <laughs> um, I like that in your Twitter feed you have a lot of of Bible verses. Were you raised Christian? Do you feel like it it helps you in, in your kind of I don't know your your sort of like critique of pop culture at all like how, how do you feel were you always very christian or did you just sort of like get more into it as you got older um i was raised christian my my father um was a pastor so that's always um been a part of my life faith has always been a big part of part of uh, part of my life my grandparents were also you know they reinforced you know they reinforced that that there's something um, greater than yourself. You can do nothing on your own power, you know, that you have power that comes from, you know, that comes from the Lord. And that's something that's been instilled in me um, throughout my life. There was a time when I actually considered walking away um, from my faith, but I had certain things that happened in my life that if I didn't have my faith, honestly, I would not, uh, would not be here. Um, but it's one of those things that it helps to keep me, helps to keep me centered. It helps to keep me humble also as well, because, you know, Jesus was not a well-known man. He wasn't a popular man. As a matter of fact, he was an outcast in his own, you know, in his own hometown. He was canceled. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, you know, everywhere he went. Oh, even his own family is like, this guy really, uh, son of, no. Nah, this I guy, know, get a haircut. What yeah, are you doing? This guy, no, it's not, yeah, I don't like that. Um, but it, but it is, it's one of the things that's helped um, center me a lot that, you know, that I, that I rely on. Um, it's also something that I use to remind me to not take things so um, so seriously. When we review these things in pop culture, it's very, very easy to get caught up in and see the negatives because we do have to see that. We have to point out the negatives and the good things. It's very easy to talk about the negative things. And sometimes you can kind of get caught in that cycle. That's everything that you talk about this negative. And sometimes you have to step out of, you know, step out of that. And even when you're dealing with people, I mean, never mind real life, but dealing with people on the internet where they can't exactly see your face sometimes, and then people will take things the wrong way. You kind of really have to just kind of give extra grace, you know, to, um, to certain people. So that's one of the things that I've kind of had to learn over my, you know, throughout my life. But also the other thing of when people show you who they are, believe them, you know, by their fruits, you shall know them. So that's Ooh. another one as well. My fruits are drying up. No, kidding. that's a <laughs> bad joke. <laughs> I'm sure they're still juicy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, do you find that like, it's like, do you go to the Bible per se a lot? Like, how do you keep it fresh for yourself? Like, how do you, you know, like, cause my buddy gave me 
like a book where it kind of breaks down. It gives you like a verse a day, which I think is like kind of helpful and cool and doesn't really overwhelm me too much. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. It seems intimidating. Like I get very curious about like, oh, I would love to like dig into the Bible and like just, I don't know, see what's like, see what's in there. Cause I, for so long growing up, I was like, oh, the Bible, it's just, it's a, it's just a book that my grandma has 200 of. I, that's for old people. And now <laughs> I'm just more and more curious about it, but it's like, it's an overwhelming, intimidating, I think like process for me. Cause it's like, where do you begin? Mm -hmm. Do you just read it? Like it's a chapter book. I don't know. Some people pick like books that they, that they like and they kind of dive in. Um, me, I have, you know, some of the verse a day things that like I have on my phone. I have like three study Bibles. The reason why I like those is because you can just go to a book or whatever passage and it's just like cliff notes, you know, Ooh, and it breaks it down right it down there. Like and it just, I like that. Yeah. So I like that because it can be so intimidating because people are like, you know, where to, you know, where to start. Some people, you know, start with like the, um, like the gospel of Matthew. Um, I personally like Acts because that's faith in action. Like oh. literally when they're going out, they're spreading the gospel. So you see the acts of the apostles, things that happen. So that's a good one. Of course, I love Proverbs. That's one that I kind of have to like slow down and take like in, in nuggets. That's one where if I go back to, I can always find something new in that. And it's like, and it doesn't take long to read, but a lot of them, you know, it just, you know, it just makes you think. So yeah, I have like three study Bibles. I've got like a cultural backgrounds Bible. So when you read certain verses, it'll give you like the cultural breakdown of like how things were in that particular, you know, in that particular time period and kind of gives you like a fresh, a fresh look on that. Ooh. I've got one that is the Geneva Bible, which was actually first printed, I think, in 1560. I've heard of that. I heard that the Geneva and that the King's version are the best. Mm -hmm. The Geneva version was first. The Geneva version they put together, there were notes like in the um, in the uh, margins of the of the Bible. It's not standardized English, so you'll freaking go cross-eyed sometimes <laughs> reading the things that are in it. But that was the one that King James didn't like because it had a lot of criticisms of uh, of the king. So that's why you oh. have the King James version, which doesn't have the notes where they basically called him out for what he was doing. That's why it was printed in Geneva, Switzerland, and not oh. in England. <laughs> That's neat. Is that so, it's probably so hard to get right now. Um, I got mine off of Amazon. Well, okay. <laughs> which, uh, which, which interestingly, I didn't even know that um, that church, that Bible existed. The reason I found it is I went to the Pilgrim Museum in, uh, in Plymouth because I was doing some family research trying to figure out who the heck are all these pilgrims and why am I related to so many of them? They're all like related and, you know, and all that. So I went to the museum to see like the artifacts that they had. And they had this Bible there that was William Bradford's, Governor William Bradford's Bible. Governor William Bradford is my 11th great grandfather on both sides of my family. It's a big, huge, long story. Wow. But they had like his Bible and it was the Geneva Bible. I've never seen anything like that with like the with like the verses, you know, the chapters, the verses and notes in, you know, in the, um, in the margins. And I said, I've never seen anything like this. I've only seen the King James Bible. They said, yeah, this one predated the King James Bible. Like the King James Bible did not come with the pilgrims to America. The Geneva Bible did. Ooh. Yeah. But eventually, because the Church of England in the British colonies, eventually the King James Bible took over the use of the Geneva Bible. What a fun fact. Join us yeah. next week for Bible chat. <laughs> yeah. Tyrants didn't like being called out. Well, you know, familiar? some things never change. <laughs> That's so neat, Lorena. Um, where can people find you and follow you? What is coming up uh, on your channels and all the shows that you do? Well, of course, you can find me on Twitter. I'm never leaving Twitter. They're going to have to kick me off perp walk. Me off Same. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll see me there causing all kinds of mischief. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm also on Instagram. You can, of course, uh, find me on YouTube, but I'll skip back. I'm actually starting up a Twitch channel. 
eventually you'll be able to see me die a lot in video games. I'm <laughs> right now practicing, learning um, Fortnite, uh, Genshin Impact. So I'm kind of, you know, ramping up on uh, on some of those games to get used to that. So yes, and I have a YouTube channel. So as for things coming up um, tomorrow at 5 p.m., I believe we're having the Baby Menace on Mandy Summers' Ooh, channel. I love her. You Mandy cute. She's, she's, she's the cutest. She's the best. Buy oh, her book. <laughs> funny. Who does not exist to be easy on the eyes? <laughs> Man, I thought she was. But it's I think she does. No, it's a frost quote. <laughs> So we have the Baby of Venice, which is like Mandy, Mary Mayhem, myself, um, Arisa Chaos, and OG Star Wars. Um, 8.30 p.m. tomorrow on Abu Nas' channel, The Dark Council will convene. So we'll have that going on. Friday, I have the Lunch Table Show, which uh, comic skate artist Charlie's London is going to be my guest. So please join us for that. Saturday, I'm having a theme park stream. I don't know exactly Ooh. which time, but it will be from Universal Studios as the Mardi Gras carnival season has uh, popped off yeah. there. So I can't wait to go get me some beads and not have to flash anybody to get beads. Oh, like I, I say, when I went to New Orleans for real the, for Mardi Gras. You're in the beads. Oh, thank you for the super chat, Kivo. Uh, I find the Kivo bringing in the mega bucks. Uh, I find recasting <laughs> or reimagining uh, in the name of diversity, insulting and lazy when there's great stories involving uh, POCs. Make a film series about Mansa Musa, Cleopatra, the Zulu, the Samurai, the Swahili, etc. Love the show, ladies. Oh, thank Ooh. you. There's some that um, that are even closer than than that. Just go Google Spanish Florida and Google Fort uh, Fort Mose. That was actually the first free black settlement in the Americas, in oh, Florida. Wow. And that the stories cool. of the people who, you know, who were who were there, it's 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 amazing. But yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, they don't want to do that. It takes effort to do that. Although there is a project, thanks to, um, I know Kamar Pasha had brought it to my attention. There's actually going to be, I believe it's going to be on stars about Queen Zynga, who Ooh. was Angolan, and she actually led a revolt against the Portuguese. Oh, I thought she was a comedian, like, because she had a lot of zingers. Uh, no. <laughs> Making fun of people. So that's, the, that's, that's one example, but uh, that's one that 50 Cent is helping to uh, bankroll. So Ooh. keep an eye out for that. That sounds exciting. Oh, what are your best and worst theme parks, in your opinion? <sighs> Ooh. Hmm. Best is definitely going to be uh, Universal Studios Orlando. That whole that whole complex. One, you get the best bang for your buck. Two, it's not an adventure getting from your car to the theme park. <laughs> and three, they treat their uh, annual pass holders like gold. You get Ooh. so many perks. It's like what? Uh, well, if you're a pass holder, like there's beer? a there's a pass holder. I wish I could get Duff beer for free, but you can't get Duff beer. At <laughs> mm -hmm. You get discounts on food. They have a pass holder lounge you can go in, like literally, you know, it's like a VIP club. Just go in, chill, hang out, um, relax. They'll let you. Well, at certain levels for the annual passes, they'll let you into the park like an hour before everyone else. Ooh, yeah, okay, that's so pretty it's dope. Just. It's 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 dope. It's fun. I never thought that I would say that because I love Disney parks. Because right now the worst, ugh, yeah, I'm probably gonna say uh, Epcot or Disney World right now. Oh, it's nothing man. but walls. Place looks tore up from the floor up. Um, Disney parks are not as not as great as they used they used to be. A honorable mention is gonna be Gatorland because it's just so freaking kitschy. <laughs> I've never, where is that? That is, I want to say about 10 miles north, 10 miles northeast of Disney. Okay, maybe I'll Yeah, so it's still in Orlando. It's on uh, Orange Blossom Trail. It's like 35 bucks to get in. And literally, it's just, it's just a gator, just a gator park. Oh my God, I'm going to pull this up really it's quick. It's so much freaking fun. You can feed gators. 
You can see baby <gasps> yeah. gators. Look how cute. If you ever. Oh, that's exactly what I thought it would be. <laughs> if you ever are having a bad day, call the main number for Gatorland. It is hysterical. Really? Yes. <laughs> it is call- freaking hysterical. It's so in character. <laughs> I'm going to call it right now. I wonder if someone's going to pick up. Let's see. Main number, which is public. I'm not like, you know, 407 855 5496. Hey, hello, right, folks, and thank you for calling us right here at Gatorland, a veritable extravaganza of fun and excitement. Home of the screaming gator zip line and stomping gator off road adventure. Man, you're going to love this place. Just not right this here minute because. Well, we're closed for the night. For Generali Information in Espaniola, press number five. For English, why you ain't got to go nowhere. You can just stay right here. Now, Gatorland is open every single day from 10 a.m. till the chickens come home. Oh it's God. currently 5 p.m. Now, don't sit in here for just $32.99. Children 3 through 12 years of age are just $22.99. And why then a little gator bait youngins under three is always free. I'm going to tell you, folks. There's the best deal in town. Now, if you're looking for Bubba or Skunk Ape or any of them other fun-loving folks that work here at Gatorland, <laughs> and you know your party's <laughs> extension, why, well, you just go ahead and press it at any time. For a company directory, in case you ain't sure who you're looking for, <laughs> why, you just press that button with the number three on it. Now you're getting the hang of it, ain't you? But if you want some general park information. Oh, my God. Okay, that's really amazing. And, yes, the <sighs> one in Spanish now. does work. It is in Spanish. Oh, la. <laughs> <laughs> Como se dice? <laughs> Gator Rooney. El Gator. Wow. Okay, now I have to go. Maybe I'll go when I'm in uh, Tampa in March. This sounds fun. Yay. All right, Lorena, you're a delight. Thank you so much for coming on the show. So great to talk to you. Well, thank I'm you such for a having fan. me. Thank Every, you. Everybody follow Lorena. Subscribe to her YouTube channel. All the things. Watch all of her shows. And uh, until next time. Bye. Thank you, chat, for your super chats, yes. as always.